Hello again everybody and welcome back to another character concept let's play featuring Aralas, the druid archer. Oh, it feels good to be recording again. It's actually been a while for me. I got pretty sick and lost my voice and developed a pretty bad cough. Um, the cough is still lingering a little bit so I apologize in advance if that <laughs> makes it into the recording. Um, we, or you may have not noticed any kind of delay in video production or anything, but um, that's mostly because I had uh, some raw gameplay uh, recorded that I could edit into uh, episodes, and I had a couple of finished episodes ready to just to be uploaded and released, so um, there's something to be said for doing it that way, for sure, staggered releases. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back. Um... So what did we do last time? It's been a while for me, so the recap will help me. Uh, I think it was a pretty simple episode, actually. We started over here at Red Oron's Retreat, I think, to retrieve Amran's sword. Um, which we did, and he appreciated. Uh, and gave us some training in one-handed and blocking, I think. Um, and we did all this in beast form. So we kind of roamed the plains a little bit. Um, and... Uh, we attacked the prey that became available to us. We ate some dudes, and we leveled up a couple times in werewolf form, uh, which was great. Um, we also upped uh, the difficulty to legendary, and I thought everything went really well with that, which I'm excited about. Um, higher difficulties in this game kind of add a tension that you don't get uh, at lower difficulties, um, and I think that tension just makes the game more fun. Um, and it also makes the gameplay more interesting because you're forced a little bit more to use uh, all the tools that you have in your arsenal um, to complete things. Um, so we started over here at Red Aron's Retreat, uh, and then we roamed the plains a little bit. Um, we encountered some bandits at Silent Moon's camp, so we cleared that out. Um, and we ended up at Halted Dream Camp over here where we actually had an official bounty from uh, the Jarl at Dragon's Reach uh, himself uh, to clear out uh, the bandit leader here <coughs> um, for the hold. So that's good. We felt good about doing all of that. Um, our wolf form got a little bit stronger. We also were able to use um, briefly the uh, Dwarven Arrows of Immolation, the trick arrows that we were able to craft using um, fire salts and dwarven arrows, uh, and they are very powerful, especially when there's flammable oil involved. <laughs> um, that that was great. That was a lot of fun. So that's that's another powerful tool that we have in our, another powerful weapon that we have in our arsenal that I'm looking forward to making more use of. Ah, and it looks like our um, Elder Gleam sapling is, is taking root a little bit here. It uh, looks like it's growing very quickly already. Um, and we're getting a very uh, happy, very warm, loving uh, energy from this tree. Um, we may come back and meditate uh, here to commune with this tree in the future, just to, just to get leads on, on what to do next or, or um, what other uh, despair needs to be um, helped or evil needs to be hunted out, things like that. And we may also go back to the Elder Gleam to do a similar thing as well. So, Aralas feels the loving, warm energy coming from this tree. Um, and he takes a second just to absorb it a little bit. He even feels maybe a tinge of gratitude there a little bit. Um, and that gratitude probably comes straight from the Elder Gleam. Um, it has a new progeny here, uh, a new foothold uh, in a very populated part of the province, um, sort of a central hub for Skyrim, um, so that its love can kind of reach more people now instead of being buried in the, in the sanctuary. Um, so it, it can be out here to inspire and spread its love. Which, honestly, makes uh, Aralas' heart swell a little bit. He's in a pretty good place now, I think. Um, even though he turns into a giant monster and eats people. Um, and he actually eats people even when he's not a giant monster. Um, he's in a pretty good place. He's happy. He's doing good for the world and for himself. Um, but he still hasn't forgotten the bad things that he's done. So he, he feels like um, he still needs to do... Uh, a little bit to repent. 
and uh, he's heard a little bit about the companions here and, and how um, they're an honorable group. Um, so he's going to take Froki up on his suggestion. Oh, excuse me. Um, take uh, Froki up on his suggestion to come uh, give these guys uh, a visit and see what they're all about. Um, we already did meet Ayla. Um, they were fighting that giant outside of Whiterun, just to the south out there. Um, and they seemed quite powerful. We might be able to learn a little bit about it, and the way she described this group, it kind of sounded like um, a family or a brotherhood, um, which is something that Aralas uh, has been craving for, for a while now. Uh, he spent his entire life alone. Um, and now that he's kind of turning a corner from, from a sort of darker place into a more um, loving place, uh, he kind of feels like he needs, uh, he needs some companionship in his life. Not that Bjorn behind him isn't fulfilling that for him, but um, just to be a part of a family, I think, uh, would, make him, would make him feel a lot better. So let's go in here and see what this place is all about. Oh no. Now, is this a real fight, or are they just sparring? Because they seem to really be going at it. Okay. So it sounds like probably this older guy here with the gray ponytail told them that it was getting a little out of hand with the weapons, so to sheet those and finish it with the fists so somebody doesn't get killed. Alright, so they're not as brutish as, as maybe we suspected they might be, just going at each other with swords, although uh, there does seem to be a major propensity for violence among these people. Uh, not that there isn't with Aralas. I don't know that Aralas is, um, uh, is super opposed to something like that, um, but we'll see. Hello, Ayla. If you wish to hunt with me, your feet need to be quick and your eyes quicker. I think you said that before, honestly. <laughs> um, so we asked her about the companions before, um, but we didn't ask what her motivations were for joining this group. My mother was a companion, and her mother, and all the women in my family back to Harati Blackblade. I stayed with my father in the woods until I was old enough for my trial. We hunted everything there was to hunt. Good training. Ma didn't live long enough to see me join, but I fight to honor her and all my shield sisters through time. Well, that sounds respectable, honestly, and a little more tempered than what we're seeing going on behind us here. Um, so I've come to see if I can join up. We don't just take in any milk drinker who stumbles in. Talk to Codlack if you think you have what it takes to be a companion. Okay, so she points us downstairs in the basement to talk to um, their harbinger. She didn't use the word leader, which is strange, but um, the harbinger named Codlack Whitemane down in the basement here. Now, Aralas being claustrophobic, he doesn't really like basements. Um, but as long as he is not in a stressed, um, in a stressed state of mind, or in a hurry to do something, he, he tends to be able to deal with it pretty well. The ceilings are pretty low though. The air is definitely a bit stagnant down here. We all is our burden to bear. But we can overcome. You have my brother and I, obviously. But I don't know if the rest will go along quite so easily. Leave that to me. Call of the blood. Wonder what they're talking about. Arlos isn't gonna pry because these are still basically strangers, and he's not trying to make a bad impression. So uh, this looks to be Codlack. Hello. A stranger comes to our hall. Okay. So immediately upon talking to this man, um, Arlos senses um, a strength of character and even um, a tempered wisdom that he didn't get from the people fighting upstairs and, and even the people um, 
uh, cheering them on. Um, he's immediately impressed with this person. Um, there's there's a strength of soul, I guess. There's a, there's a very strong energy coming from him, but it's not like a violent hatred or anything. It's it's tempered. It's uh, honorable. It's righteous, um, and it is it's quite strong. Um, he's immediately impressed. Um, so what what would you say uh, the companions stand for? Your question carries more weight than you may know, newcomer. The sort of thing some of us spend our lives pondering. The difference between a noble band of warriors and a ragged bunch of assassins is as thin as a blade's edge. I try to hold us to the right path. Okay. That sounds good. Why did you join the companions? Like most of our band, I found this family after losing my own. I traveled the length and breadth of this land, learning all I could of the sword and the axe. I was <coughs> just a boy. Excuse me. I had the fire of a man in my heart. Eventually, my body caught up to my spirit. My predecessor, Asgar, found me in Hammerfell. I was serving as a bodyguard for some weak-necked lord out there. He brought me back here, and I realized I was actually coming home. I worked to bring honor to this family and to the family that I lost. For my mother, my father, and my grandfather. For all my shield siblings. Family and honor. That's what it means to be one of us, boy. Uh, well, he honestly couldn't give a more perfect answer if um, the violence upstairs put Aralas off of this whole thing. Uh, right away. Um, the answer that Codlack just gave him um, completely turned him around. He's completely on board now. Um, he gets the sense that everybody's using the word family. And they're not using the word leader with Codlack uh, in the sense of a boss, but he, but Arlos gets the sense that Codlack is, is a bit of a father figure uh, to these people. Uh, as well as kind of an alpha dog, so to speak. Um, if you've been through this quest line, you, you know why that's a little bit funny to me. But um, Arlos has never had a fa father figure, and he's kind of craved one um, his entire life with the with the hunting parties and stuff that he's grown up with. Um, he's had people that helped him and taught him, but nobody who really showed him kind of the the tough love that a father would. Um, kind of that masculine parental energy in his life. He's never experienced that. He might crave it a little bit. Um, not that he knows that. Uh, I think maybe we know that a little better than he does. Uh, but he is drawn to this person. So he's, he's ready to sign up. Greetings, outsider. If you have some business here, speak it. I would actually like to join you if you would have me. Would you now? Here, let me have a look at you. Yes, perhaps. A certain strength of spirit. Master, you're not truly considering accepting him. I am nobody's master, Vilkas. And last I checked, we had some empty beds in your basket for those with a fire burning in their hearts. Apologies. Thought perhaps this isn't the time. I've never even heard of this outsider. Sometimes the famous come to us. Sometimes men and women come to us to seek their fame. It makes no difference. What matters is their heart. And their arm. Of course. How are you in battle, boy? Uh, humility is not something that Aralas has demonstrated before. He's, he's usually pretty sure of his abilities, though he's not really boastful. So I think I can handle myself uh, would be the most appropriate response. That may be so. This is Vilkas. He will test your arm. Vilkas, take him out to the yard and see what he can do. I. Okay, are we going to go do this? So it sounds like he just wants to have a look at um, what I'm capable of uh, combat-wise, most likely. And they said to meet him in the yard. Um, 
Bjorn uh, is kind of a bulky entity, so <laughs> he tends to get in the way a little bit, but uh, we'll let Vilkas off the hook here and, <laughs> and kind of go where he wanted us to go anyway. Bjorn, you're an obstacle, buddy. Okay, now this tends to be um, a little difficult, a bit of a precarious situation with Bjorn uh, involved, um, just because he tends to go aggressive a little bit now and then, even when uh, we were just sparring. So I'm going to go ahead and take him out of the equation for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and make a quick save, just in case this gets a little sideways. Okay, so all of the other companions just fell silent right there, and you can feel everybody's eyebrows raise. Should I be holding Not the blade further away than I Next time won't be so easy. You might just point. make it. But for now, you're still a whelp to us, in your blood. So you do what we tell you. Here's my sword. Go take it up to Yorland to have it sharpened. And be careful. It's probably worth more than you are. Okay, so he gave us a kind of a sideways compliment there, but uh, we can tell his pride is a little bit hurt, and in order to um, repair that a little bit, he, he kind of said, you know what, uh, you're still uh, a noob here, so here, take this sword. He, ga he gave us some sort of just a token uh, delivery errand to run that is apparently below him, but, but not below me, so or Aralos. Um, so that's all right. Aralos will will take that. Um, he's not looking to make enemies here. Um, but yeah, everybody watched that. Everybody saw that, um, and everybody just felt quiet. Um, so Aralos can tell that people were impressed by what he exhibited there. Uh, Vilkas is no pushover. He's one of the ranking members of the companions, um, and for good reason. He's apparently a powerful warrior. Um, Aralos just gave him a counter left hook to the chin uh, to stumble him, um, and then two arrows uh, in the shoulder, nowhere vital, um, took him down and out for the count uh, within seconds. Um, so he kind of felt everybody's eyebrows raise, uh, and everybody's internal dialogues kind of went, huh, uh, as they kind of silently uh, filed back into uh, your Vasker here. Um, so that was a pretty good first impression, we think. Uh, let's go see what... I mean, we've we've bought um, uh, crafting materials from Yorland, and we've sold some loot to him as well. Uh, we'll leave that open. We're coming right back out. Um, but we've never really talked to him and gotten to know him personally, um, so maybe we'll, we'll talk to him a little bit what at this point. Uh, Vilkas sent me with his sword. I'm guessing you're the newcomer then. Yeah, I'm just trying to do what's asked of me right now. Uh, I, I'm brand new here, so I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers. That attitude would get you far, if you were some stuffy <coughs> merchant or a Jarl's footstool. Around here, you'll want to learn to live your own life. Remember, nobody rules anybody in the Companions. That's fair. Um, are you a Companion? Not actually a companion myself, but none of them know how to work a forge properly, and I'm honored to serve them. My name is Jorlin Greymane. I work the Skyforge, best steel in all of Skyrim, all of Tamriel. Uh, well, we kind of knew that. Um, 
This question is a little redundant to our loss. Uh, it was immediately apparent that Codlock, Codlack is the one calling the shots here, that he's the one in charge, even if everybody says that uh, there is no leaders, or there are no leaders of this group. So we'll just bid Yorland adieu for now. I have a favor to ask. Sure, what is it? I've been working on a shield for Aella. My wife is in mourning, and I need to get back to her soon. I'd be much obliged if you could take this to Aella for me. Okay, I'd be happy to lend a hand. Uh, Arlos is not in a snarky mood. He's in a good place. He's he's happy to be helpful at this point. Uh, and it sounds like this is for a good cause. It's not Yorlin just trying to take me down a notch and, and put himself up a notch like Vilkas was doing. But, uh, yeah, I'll be happy to lend a hand. That's a good man. Although it doesn't look like he's getting back to his grieving wife, it looks like he's getting back to his tanning rack, but that's okay. Maybe he had some last minute orders he's got to uh, attend to before he heads back to uh, to his poor wife. Okay, so as we pass by Vilkas here, <laughs> we take a glance back at him and he is not making eye contact with us whatsoever, uh, which is okay. Um, now we need to find Ayla. I'm not seeing her up here. She might be downstairs. Let's go check. Okay, so I doubt... Ayla, being a ranking member of this uh, guild, um, would be betting in with the rest of the little peons here. Um, let's do this, though. Uh, Aralos, um, being a werewolf and a master hunter, um, and kind of able to sense things from the air and such that other people are not able to, um, you can uh, sense people's presence through walls and stuff, so let's let's do that. Okay. It feels like there is a feminine energy coming from behind this wall, so we're guessing that's probably where Ayla is. Oops. Did we interrupt something? If you wish to hunt with me, your feet need to be quick and your eyes quicker. I think you're fond of saying that. Isgrimor himself wouldn't have the patience to deal with all the rabble around here. Was that a jab? Uh, anyway, I have your shield. Uh, Yorland wanted me to bring this to you. Ah, good. I've been waiting for this. Wait, I remember you. So the old man thinks you've got some heart, I guess. You know this one? I saw him training in the yard with Vilkis. Ah, yes. I heard you gave him quite a thrashing. Don't let Vilkis catch you saying that. Do you think <laughs> you could handle Vilkis in a real fight? Oh, boy. Um, well, Aralos doesn't really care to for boasting, but he also um, is not one to shy away from uh, talking about his true potential, so... Um, yeah, if we're talking about a real fight, uh, honestly, without boasting, I think he might be dead uh, within a few seconds. Whoa, he's up there. We're rough, but there's no need to kill a shield brother over a dispute. No. I like your fire, though. You'll make a fierce companion. Let us hunt together sometime. Here, let's have Farkas show you where you'll be resting your head. Farkas. He didn't mean to threaten Vilkas, he was just... Answering a question as honestly as he could. Show this new blood where the rest of the whelps sleep. New blood? Oh, I remember you. Come on, follow me. Are you prepared for tonight's hunt? I've been thinking. We need to be more. Skior and Ayala like to tease. There's nothing wrong with their good people. They challenge us to be our best. Let's 
just not be too obvious. It's nice to have a new face around. It gets boring here sometimes. I hope we keep you. This can be a rough life. The quarters are up here. Just pick a bed and fall in it when you're tired. Tell me we'll keep the place clean. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so here you are. Looks like the others are eager to meet you. Come to me or Ayala if you're looking for work. Once you've made a bit of a name for yourself, Skior and Vilkas might have things for you to do. Good luck. Welcome to the Companions. Thank you. By the way, if you're looking for something to do, we've gotten a letter about someone needing some muscle right here in Whiterun Hold. I don't know what the fight is about, and that's not our business anyway. I just need you to go out there, look tough, and scare this milk drinker into submission. No more than that. I don't want to hear about a killing, understand? Oh, yeah. No, we're not... We're not in the business of being hired muscle and kind of shaking people down. Uh, that's not why we joined up here. Uh, that's not the place we're in right now, so I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to decline that job. Unfortunate, but someone else will take care of it. Well, thank you for being understanding. Um, so what does it mean to you to be a companion? I've never been a smart one, but the companions welcome anyone with the heart of a warrior. When we step into battle, we fight for our own name and the name of the companions. Um, I wouldn't say he's not smart, uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so why did you join? Vilkas and I have been here since we were little whelps. Our father, Jürgen, raised us here. Even Vigner couldn't remember companions younger than us. Okay, so you're Vilkas' brother, huh? And he's a heavy armor trainer. Great. We're not really interested in this war, so we're going to let him go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, he speaks slowly and in simple terms, uh, but he does demonstrate some capacity for wisdom. He, uh, he tends to absorb the lessons that he needs to absorb, and he's able to apply um, that knowledge uh, as he needs to. Um, so in our mind, Farkas isn't dumb. He's actually probably pretty wise. Um, his mind just operates um, in simple, more methodical ways. Um, and we also sense a great strength from him too, so um, he's probably a pretty formidable individual regardless. Um, so we need to find A11. Vilkas said, or not Vilkas, Farkas said that we could come to him or Ayla for work, and we didn't like what Farkas was offering, so maybe Ayla will give us something a little more palatable. No, we don't want to talk to Farkas again. Oh, okay. I don't see her. Maybe she went back out to the yard. Well, there's Skior. Ayla was hanging out with him. Oh, there she is. Hello. I'm waiting. Uh, yeah, so Farkas told me I could come to you for work. A citizen of Whiterun has asked for our help. It seems that a predator has invaded their home, and someone needs to clear the beast out. Ah, that's that's more our speed. Yeah, we can do that. Good. I knew that we could count on you. It's simply a beast, but be cautious. The beasts of Skyrim are made of sterner stuff than most. Oh, I know. Uh, simply a beast is not uh, a term that we would use. Um, We're little more than beasts when it comes right down to it, uh, especially when we consider our werewolf blood here. Um, but Arlos has a great respect for the beasts that he hunts. Um, okay, so... Sven's home in Riverwood. Okay, uh, it's 5.50. It's getting dark, but I think we can make it down to Riverwood. Um, and what was it? 
A wolf? Yeah, we can we can truck all the way down there. We can um, exterminate the the wolf there. Um, as it seems like there are citizens in danger. Um, and then we can make it back to our camp in time for a little bit to eat and some rest. So I'll probably cut the video here, and I'll see you back in Riverwood. Okay, so here we are in Riverwood. Um, on the way... Uh, hello. On the way, uh, we encountered uh, a saber cat. Uh, which was pointed out by the spirit of the forest, or the harrier in our case, um, gameplay mechanic-wise. Uh, so we took that out. We uh, were able to um, level up our skill in archery, which gave us enough for a new level up. Um, and I think that's going to unlock the lion's arrow perk for us, and um, I am super excited for that. But here we are in Riverwood, just outside of Sve um, I'm sorry, Sven's house. Um, and before we go in, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. Um, being a druid, um, probably killing animals for money isn't necessarily the, uh, the best thing to do <laughs> uh, with their mindset. Um, but in this case, um, we know that Sven and his mother actually live here. Um, so there's an elderly woman living in this place that has somehow been um, uh, visited, <laughs> shall we say, uh, by a wild wolf. Um, now, most animals, especially predatory animals, tend to be territorial, at least in some way. Um, humans are no different. Um, it's completely natural. Uh, so a wild, dangerous wolf invading the territory of someone who is less capable of um, defending themselves against that. Uh, it is, uh, I think it's natural for these people to seek out somebody stronger in their community um, to help them with that problem. So I don't think Arlas has any issue with this. This is all very natural. Um, not a problem. Uh, Arlas isn't going to feel good about killing this animal. Um, now we said it's a wolf, and we know that wolves are friendly, so we're not going to need to worry about being ready for any kind of battle here or anything. Um, now yeah, Arlas doesn't feel good about killing this creature. Uh, there was a time in his past that he would have, that kind of being able to show off his hunting ability um, was a big part of who he was, but now, not so much. So we're going to apply uh, sort of a preemptive healing spell to this creature. This may numb the pain a little bit. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, I renamed the, the Valenwood Warbow to something a little more meaningful, and, and we will, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit in a moment. Um, but first, we have a job to do. Now we're going to aim straight for the heart on this animal. Um, we're not going to cause it any undue suffering. Its heart stopped immediately, uh, so we're good. Um, the creature did not suffer at all, and we're going to go ahead and take what we can from the animal to give its death uh, a purpose. By shore, what do you want? I'm helping you out with your wolf problem, you crazy old lady. All right. Even cleaned it up for you. Not that you're appreciative of it at all. Jeez. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so what time do we have now? It's at 8 o'clock, so we have just enough time to get back to our camp, have some dinner, and get some rest, uh, get to bed at a decent hour. But first, let's talk about our bow. So this is the same bow we've been using. It's, uh, it's the Valenwood War Bow that's packaged in with immersive weapons. Um, and we like it because it has a super quick draw speed on it, uh, which allows us to spray arrows um, uh, faster than any other bow, which uh, helps our damage per second out a lot. It, it may actually even cause, even though it only does 34 damage at, at legendary right now, um, the speed at which it fires, I, I, it, I think it actually, it, well, it feels like it anyway. The damage per second uh, with this thing is probably higher than that with a, a more damaging bow at a slower draw speed. 
And once we take Lion's Arrow, and with our trick arrows and everything, um, that's only multiplied the damage of all that, because we can fire these out so quickly. Um, so there's that. Um, I have renamed it, as you can say, to be, as you can see, uh, to kind of accomplish two things. Um, one, to kind of be uh, a little more of a role play mechanic, as we've seen with Bjorn, just simply naming something uh, can can add meaning to it. Um, and of course, everybody loves Bjorn, <laughs> uh, the big lug. Um, so now we've been using this bow for quite a while now, so I, I figured it was time to name it. And the name that I've given it is the Antula Afe, which roughly translates to return to spirit. And I think if we're making the turn toward a druid, um, that, that name uh, kind of fits a little better. Instead of killing things like uh, Aralas was very proud of doing uh, in his hunter phase, um, he's kind of returning the soul of whatever he's killing to the forest, and that's how he's thinking of it now. Uh, it's got a little bit more of a positive spin on it, and it, uh, it's more meaningful to Aralas that way uh, in his sort of newfound fledgling spirit spirituality. Um, it's a very raw way to think about it, but it's, it's pretty accurate, I think, uh, as far as how Aralas would see it. Um, and I don't see that that uh, um, uh, interpretation of death changing for Aralas anytime soon. Um, and the language here was uh, a Tolkien uh, Elvish. Um, originally, the uh, the Antula was spelled with an E instead of an A-E, but I thought it was just a cool little addition to, um, it, it kind of, uh, it draws back to Aralas's name, the, uh, the A-E inside of his name, and that, that's kind of a, a vowel combo that I like a lot from the Elven language. Uh, it's just very, it's just very Elven to me. Um, and the other thing that that does is in our sort of uh, quick menu here, it puts the war bow right up on top. Um, I'm really sick of having to go all the way to the bottom of this list every time I want to re-equip the bow. So now, um, if I am healing Bjorn or myself, um, I have a spell active, it puts the war bow away. Now all I have to do is go back to uh, my equipment menu and it's right there on top. I don't have to cycle all the way down to the bottom anymore, which is great. Two birds, one stone. Um, okay, so I think now it is time to head back to camp. Uh, we'll level up, and then um, after a good rest and a meal and everything, we will head back to Ayla, turn in our um, uh, job, um, see what they give us, and see what else they have for us. Okay, so here we are, right outside of our good old trusty camp here. Um, beautiful view of um, Whiterun and Dragon's Reach from here. Um, I love uh, Dindalod and the, the lighted windows. It's a great touch. Um, yeah, so we made it back to camp. Uh, had a little bit to drink, a little bit to eat, so our belly's full and we are satisfied. Um, I replenished the fuel in the campfire, so let's go ahead and have a seat and level up here, shall we? Okay, so now we're coming up on level 36, I believe, right? Yeah, so that is, that is a Magicka level. Let's go ahead and take some Magicka. Um, and we have one perk to increase. Uh, so let's go right to archery here and see if we have Lion's Arrow available. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so this grants the Lion's Arrow power. Use it to store the spell you are dual casting. Shoot a fully drawn bow in combat to... Uh, I'm sorry, shooting a fully drawn bow in combat also releases the spell stored in the direction of the crosshair. This only works with spells that affect other targets. 
Oh, fun. Okay. All right. So what can we do with this, huh? I'm going to go ahead and make a quick save right here, just in case I try to experiment with something here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right, so what do we have immediately available? Spells that affect others. Um, Horde Wilting could work. Perilous Path. Yeah, okay, let's try with... Oh, no, one I'm really actually... Yeah, let's try it with Horrid Wilting. So, the problem with Horrid Wilting is it does splash damage. I didn't hit Bjorn directly. I hit the, uh, the ground right beneath him. Um, so, if we're splashing this thing around all over the place... Um, may end up in a dead bear, and, and I don't like it when Bjorn dies. Um, but anyway, this could be fun for now, just to try it out. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and undermine might be good too, actually. Horrid wilting. Oh, first we need to Activate that power. Oh, I gotta wait for my magic to recharge. Do to do to do. Here we go. And it's stored. All right. So let's ready our bow. Cool. All right. I'm gonna make a quick save here, and then I might spawn in um, just a bandit. I just want a vanilla bandit, though. I don't want something that's... 0B... I don't know. One of these might work, I guess. Let's try a bandit thug. That was pretty good, huh? Uh, now with stronger enemies, obviously this is this is uh, gonna have more of a noticeable effect. And just in case anybody thinks I'm like cheating and not actually playing on legendary, uh, there it is, difficulty legendary. We're able to one-shot that wolf. Um, basically able to one-shot this bandit thug after all the poison damage has been applied from horrid wilting. I think Horrid Wilting would be great to, um, as a party starter, kind of in the distance, um, and then we could switch to something. It doesn't take that long, just, uh, just however long it takes to charge up the spell, I guess. Um, and then we can switch to something a little more targeted, like Undermine. Lion's Arrow is a lesser power, so you can cast it whenever you want. Um, and what Undermine does is... All the way down there. Oh, that's a uh, alteration spell. Um, for 52 seconds, shifting Earth causes the target to lose its balance when swinging a melee weapon, staggering the target and draining 30 points of stamina. So there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so every time that a melee uh, enemy tries to swing its weapon at us, uh, it, under the effect of that spell, uh, it will stagger instead and lose stamina, uh, which is great for an archer. If we can fire that off every time we fire an arrow in combat, um, that would make us really powerful. Um, so yeah, there's that. Oops, I was trying to heal other. Sorry about that. Bjorn, my fault. There you go. Um, 
yeah, so that's it. And I don't actually want to <laughs> save that encounter. That encounter is not uh, canon. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate what this what this ability does. Um, and it only works in combat. So if I just fire off a regular arrow, um, it's not gonna it's not gonna have the uh, the magical effect attached to it. It has to be in combat for you to get that. Um, okay, well, I think this is a good point to stop this build, or I'm sorry, stop this build. Definitely not stop the build, but stop the uh, the video, this episode. Um, we'll pick back up uh, after we um, head back into Yorvisker and we uh, turn the job back into Ayla, and we'll see what else she has for us. Um, should be a good episode next time. I think there's uh, there's some fun stuff ahead of us. Uh, until then, I'll see you next time, and take care.